Hi, my name is Matt. Uh, I work at Square here in the Kitchener office on the Couch team. And today we're going to talk about creating custom views that draw directly to the canvas. So, what is a custom view? A custom view is any class that you make that uh, extends directly or indirectly from view, uh, extend text view, paper and layout. And you would do this if you wanted to add helper methods like binding to data or showing your view in a fancy animated way. Uh, but that's not the purpose of this talk. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, drawing to the canvas. So, a uh, concrete example, we have our avatar view. Uh, you put this in a list of users, for instance. And we have some requirements for this. Uh, first of which is that we want to be able to change the background color depending on the user showing, uh, change the letter showing, first initial. And we're going to have uh, click handling on this. So when you press it, you want to be able to show that it's being pressed with the darkening. And ultimately, if the user has an image, we are going to show that image in the view. And in this case, uh, we have a stroke on here. The stroke is going to appear on top of the image. And the press state is also going to show on top of the image as well. So how would you do this with standard Android views and XML? Uh, you need a layout to wrap all your views together. We'll start with a frame layout, nice and simple. Uh, the frame layout is going to be the one that has the background on it. And we're going to be setting that in code dynamically based on the user. You need a text view uh, to show the initial. On top of that, you're going to put your image view for showing the image. And on top of that, you need a view for showing the stroke, the border. And on top of that, you're going to uh, show your press state. And we can actually uh, optimize this a little bit, put a foreground on the layout here. And so that's how you do it with XML. Um, however, it's not perfect. There's actually an issue here. Make this really big. It's really hard to tell. But the distance from the top of your letter to the top of the view is 70 pixels. And the distance between the bottom is 68 pixels. So your letter isn't centered, even though we told TextView to center it vertically. Now, you might not notice, um, or you might not care, but your designers will notice, and they will make you change it. So what you could do, if you wanted to, done this in the past, is add uh, one dip of padding at the bottom, shove the letter up a little bit, Pretends like it's centered, it's still not, but hopefully it's enough that your designers don't hear. Um, but we can actually solve this better. So the method that we're going to be talking about today is onDraw. OnDraw takes in a canvas. So what is a canvas? It is a class that lets you issue high-level draw commands, and this will be drawn to the screen. So you can do things like draw a line, draw a rectangle, oval, draw some text. You can fill the canvas with a solid color. You can draw a complex path. You can draw a bitmap. And there's a whole bunch more. Uh, you can also transform the canvas. So you can do things like translate it, scale it, rotate it, skew it. You can even clip it. And there's some more things here as well that we're not going to get into. All right, so on draw method. Let's look at some examples here. Here's your phone has a canvas. Uh, we're going to pretend that the display on this phone is really bad and those are all enormous pixels. Uh, your origin is in the top left corner and it grows to the right and down. So we're going to draw a rectangle to the canvas, starting at 5.5 and going to 10.10. And we're going to give it a paint. The paint is telling it to draw a solid white. And it's going to draw your square right there. Now we're going to translate the canvas. And what you may think initially is that it's going to uh, move the canvas on the screen such that the square moves up into the corner. But that's not the right way to think about this because canvas transformations don't apply retroactively to things you've already drawn. They apply to future draw calls. So the right way to think about this is that you're taking your origin and you're moving it down there. Now we're going to draw an oval starting at the origin. And it's going to draw down there now. 
All right, so we need our view to hold all this information. We are going to extend image view because we want to um, take advantage of Android's image loading that they've already implemented in image view. We want to be able to take this view and pass it into existing methods that, like image loading libraries that are expecting an image view. All right, so we need to set up our paint. We're going to start with the background. And uh, you're going to initialize a new paint object. You're going to tell it you want to anti-alias it. And you're going to tell it that you want to fill. Um, you still, you're going to need to set the color at some point. Uh, because we're doing this dynamically based on the user, we're going to do this in the set user method. Um, one important thing to point out is that this is in your constructor. You don't want to do this in on draw. Uh, in order for your device to run at 60 frames per second, on draw um, needs to execute for your entire view hierarchy in 60 milliseconds. Um, so you keep all your initializations out of there and just issue draw commands. So now you've got your paint set up and you're on draw method. You're just going to draw an oval. You're going to start at 0, 0. You're going to draw the oval to the full size of your view. And you're going to pass it the background paint. And because we want the image to be drawn on top of the background, we're going to do this before the super call. So we're going to be uh, drawing for those same, uh, same bounds over and over again. So we can optimize this a little bit, uh, extract that out into a rect. And we can update that only when the bounds of our view change. So we can do that in on measure and then just use it in on draw. All right, now for the border, uh, basically the same thing. Set up the paint, set the color. We're going to set the style of the stroke this time. And we're going to set our stroke width. And our example is one pixel. Then in our on draw, we're going to just draw another oval. And we want the border to be drawn on top of the image. So we're going to do it after a super call. Now for the press state, same thing. Set the paint, set it to fill this time. And in on draw, if your view is currently pressed, then we're going to draw the oval on top. And as is, this isn't going to work. Um, when you press on a view, uh, Android isn't going to invalidate your view uh, and cause on draw to be called again. Uh, so you can do that yourself. You can do this in the drawable state change, state change method. Uh, this gets called anytime the state of the view changes, so press, active, etc. All right, so now we're going to talk about text. We're talking about font metrics, and why text view does not vertically center your letters as you expect. So here we have capital M. And here we have the baseline. This is where most of your letters are going to be uh, drawn on top of. And below that, we have the descent. So this is where letters like G and Y, and anything with a descender, will be drawn near. Above, we have the ascent. This is for things with uh, diacritics, like accents. And below that, we have the bottom. This is the theoretical lowest point that a font will draw at. Um, I couldn't find any characters that drew to this line in Roboto. And then top is the same thing for the top theoretical highest point that your font will draw at. And these are variable based on the font, so uh, Roboto is going to have potentially have slightly different font metrics than like Arial. Um, and the way that text view centers your font is looks at the top and the bottom. And in Roboto, uh, the distance for a capital uh, English letter with diacritics, it's slightly different distance between the top and the bottom, which is why it centers it slightly off center. Um, another way you could do it is if you wanted to, you can center it based on the ascent and the descent. Uh, in Roboto, this does center it, and then you have a consistent baseline between all your letters. Uh, but we'll, what we're going to do is we're going to actually measure the height of the character that we're drawing. So we're going to set up our text paint. This time we're going to uh, give it a text size, and by default, when you draw text to the canvas, it uh, it draws it with uh, your point in the bottom left corner of the text. Uh, we can change that and tell it to draw from the bottom center, and we don't really have to deal with um, horizontally centering it uh, any more complicated than just uh, half the width of the view. So here's our set user method that I mentioned before. 
And here, we are, this is where we're going to measure the bounds of the initial that we're drawing. Uh, it's going to be set into that text bounds uh, object, which is a rect. Then in our onDraw method, we're going to calculate where we want to start drawing our text. So we're going to start with the center of the view vertically, and we're going to add half the height of the text to uh, get it to center vertically. And then we simply draw it at that text bottom and then in the middle of the view, horizontally. All right, so now we have a very simple avatar. Uh, it does everything that we asked it to do. However, there is still an issue here. It's really hard to tell, so I'm going to make it much bigger. And it's still hard to see what's going on. So I'm going to draw a big arrow here, and I'm going to tell you that that stroke is not white. And I assure you, I told it to draw white. So, what's happening here? Let's look at our canvas again. We're going to tell it to draw a line. So it's going to draw a line right there. And in our line paint, we told that we want it to be a one pixel stroke. And the way it does strokes is it uh, draws it out from the center of the line. So it's going to try to do this. As you can see, uh, those are both on pix or half pixel boundaries. You can't draw half a pixel. So what Android's going to do is it's going to expand it to two pixels, and then anti-aliasing is going to kick in, and it's going to drop the opacity to about 50%. So now we've asked you to draw a one pixel solid white line, and instead it's drawing a two pixel semi-transparent white line. So you can fix this just by uh, nudging the line a bit so that it, uh, when it expands to one pixel, it actually fills one pixel only. Um, so we have our bounds here in our measure. We're going to make a copy of this. And we're going to inset it by half of the border width. In our case, it's going to inset it by half a pixel. And what this is going to do is it's going to shrink our rectangle on every, every edge by half a pixel. All right, so now we have our avatar view. It's actually drawing a white stroke this time. Uh, but we still have some optimization and improvements that we can do here. When, you, when the image gets drawn, we are still drawing the background behind it and the letter behind it. So we are overdrawing here. We are wasting resources. Um, so let's, let's get rid of that. Uh, one way to do this, the easy way, is in your view, check if the drawable is set. Um, so this will work in some cases, but if you're using a image loading library like Picasso, um, Picasso gives you nice fade transitions when you're loading an image, and it does that using a transition drawable. And what's going to happen is it's going to set the drawable on your view. Uh, the drawable is going to be transparent at the time, and you're going to see that drawable set, and you're going to stop drawing the background of the text. So for half of the animation of the image fading in, you're not going to be drawing a background or your letter. So what we can do here is we can take advantage of the image loading library and we can make a placeholder drawable instead. So making a custom drawable is more or less the same, same, uh, same thing as creating a custom view. Instead of extending the view, we're going to extend drawable. When we need to get the bounds of our view or to see that they're updated, instead of on measure, we override set bounds. And then our on draw is going to stay exactly the same. So in this case, because we want the border and the press state to be drawn on top of the image, the only thing that we're going to be pulling out is the background and the text. So those will be drawn in the placeholder. So Picasso example, you're going to load your image, you're going to set your placeholder to this new avatar placeholder. And you're going to set the target to your avatar view. And now you're going to get a nice transition fade from the text with the background to the image. And once the image is loaded in, it's not going to be drawing the background or text anymore. All right, so you've got this nice view. Uh, currently, it's set very statically. You have your all your colors um, set in the view. But you want to be able to customize this. So in your attributes file, you can set all of the dimensions that you want to have configurable. Um, as you can see here, we have text color, text size, border color, border width, and press color. Um, however, Text color and text size are already defined in the Android namespace, so we can just reuse those and reduce any confusion when uh, you want to use your view. And then in your constructor, you're going to grab these parameters from the XML. Uh, you're able to set defaults here. 
in case they're not defined, so that you can reference. You have you have same defaults. Uh, And in your XML and your layout, when you want to reference your view, you can customize all of these, all these different uh, variables. All right, so that's the avatar view. Uh, let's get into some more examples that we've done in cache. So here we have uh, a payment activity list or history, and this is a slightly older, uh, older version of the app, so we don't have this exact screen anymore. Uh, but we have all these chat bubbles here. And one way to do these chat bubbles is to use nine patches. Um, so you can have nine patch for each one of those, or you could possibly make one and tint it. However, there's one at the bottom there which causes problems, which is the one that is an outline that's dashed. Uh, this is tricky to do a nine patch because you want when you when you want to stretch it, you want it to repeat at the correct intervals of the dash and gap so you don't have any hash gap and half dashes in there. Um, so we're gonna do this all in Canvas. So this is the shape that we wanna create. Uh, it's a fairly simple shape, this is chat bubble. So we're gonna do this using a path. So you're gonna set up your path, you're gonna divide up your shape into a bunch of different points. Uh, start your path on the first point, line to the second point, Mark to P3, you're going to keep going around your view until you've traced out the shape that you want. I have simplified this quite a bit. The arc2 method takes like six parameters, um, but you can figure that out. So now that you have your path, we want to draw it to the canvas. You're just going to call draw path. You're going to give it the bubble paint, which in this case is set to fill a solid white. And there you draw a chat bubble to your, to your screen. Um, now, the tricky one that I mentioned before was the stroke outline. This is actually really simple to do. Uh, there's this class called path effect and dash path effect. So you can uh, initialize it with an array of alternating uh, dashes and gap lengths. In our case, we want a, we only want uh, two here. We don't want any variable dashes, so we set those in. And then you set the path effect on your paint. And now you've just drawn a dashed version of this bubble. Uh, so we took this one step further, mainly because we could. Um, as you can see here, the lines are moving around, trying to make it more playful. This is also quite easy to do. There's this second parameter here on the dash path effect that I uh, ignored before. This is called the phase. And what this is, is it's basically the offset from where it's going to start drawing your path effect. Um, so in our case, uh, we want to move the lines around, so in an animator, we can update this phase uh, from your from zero up to the dash length and the dash gap, and then on every uh, every frame, it's going to slightly uh, move the dash by one. If you want to learn more about this, there's a fantastic blog post by Ramon B. Uh, he's got to search for Ramon B. Path Effect, and it'll be the first result you see. All right, some more examples of things we've done. Uh, here we have a fancy button that we want to tra transition into a confirm button. Our designers came up with this sweet animation where it outlines the button and then changes the background. Um, so this is kind of a hybrid uh, canvas uh, view group. So the outline is being drawn to the canvas, and then we transition um, between different text views and different backgrounds. Uh, in the code. Um, so the outline effect is basically the same same thing as the dash effect, just a different version of it. You can get it to draw your path uh, at different lengths and you just animate between the length. So here we have our home screen. We've got a fancy keypad here and a fancy amount. Um, so the keypad, the actual canvas drawing code is there is pretty basic. All you're doing here is you're drawing text, you're drawing a line underneath the numbers, and you're scaling it accordingly. Uh, all the complex logic here is around touch handling. Um, not going to get into that. It's a whole talk on its own. But the actual canvas part is fairly simple. Uh, same for the amount on top. 
All we're really doing is just drawing text to the screen. Um, the complex logic here is around the animations and keeping track of all the numbers that are coming in and out. All right, so hopefully I have enticed you to start using custom views. You may be asking, why don't I just do everything to Canvas? It's more efficient. Should I do everything with Canvas? No, please don't do that. With a big asterisk on here, which is that if you want to spend a great amount of time, sure, do it. So Android, uh, it's been around for years. We've optimized it like crazy. Tons of caching, uh, tons of things that you're getting for free in the framework. Um, so don't go and reinvent the wheel just so you can save two views, for instance. Uh, do it because you can't do it with the standard widgets, or because, uh, like my example, you had five views that you could collapse into one. Uh, there's one important thing that you lose when you uh, do things yourself, which is accessibility features. So that keypad that I showed you, uh, if we were just drawing to the canvas with no other accessibility improvements, then somebody who's visually impaired can't use the app at all. They're going to explore the screen by moving the finger around, they're going to get to the keypad, and it's just going to tell them that's a keypad, even though there's 12 <laughs> buttons on there for them to press. So if you have a simple view where you're drawing text, uh, you can get away with just setting the content description. Uh, Android will read this back using Talk Aloud to the user when they hover over your view. Uh, if you have a more complicated view like the keypad I showed you, you're going to want to use the Explore by Touch Helper. Uh, this is provided in the Support V4 library. Uh, if you don't use this, you're going to write a stupid amount of code. Uh, I don't recommend it. This class is amazing. To learn more about it, they gave a talk about this at Google I.O. 2013. I highly recommend it. It is a fantastic talk. All right, so some tips to leave you with. First one, great rule to live by. Don't break preview. So when you're doing layout development in XML in Studio, you have this really cool preview tool on the right side of your screen. Um, if you're implementing a custom view, and you're making assumptions about the way that your view is going to be called, uh, you have the potential to break this on preview. You're going to get no pointer exceptions because when it's rendering your view, it's not going to be calling your set data methods or things like that. So you can fix this by checking using edit mode. This is a method provided on view that you can call. When you're in preview, this is going to return true. So you can wrap your, your uh, assertions in, in, in edit mode and then stop no pointering on things. Next up, embrace preview. So when you're developing custom views, um, generally what you do is you can, you're going to make a change, you're going to compile your project, you're going to install it to the emulator of your device, then you're going to run it, then you're going to navigate to the screen where the view is being used. Uh, you can skip almost all those steps and uh, just test it out in the preview tool uh, just by compiling it. So if you need data on your view, in your constructor, you can check if you're in the preview tool, and you can set uh, mock data. So for instance, if you're creating a custom chart uh, in your constructor, if you're in preview mode, then you can set a bunch of sample points. And then in the preview tool, it will draw a graph for you. Uh, also, take advantage of the tools namespace. So if you, if, say for instance, you have a view that draws text, and you support the Android text attribute, but you don't want to set that in your XML because it's going to be set dynamically. Uh, in your XML, you can just, instead of Android prefix, you can use tools, tools prefix, and it will only set that attribute in preview mode. Uh, take advantage of translate, scale, rotate, all these uh, canvas uh, transformations. Um, so, say you want to animate a animate that chat bubble for some reason. You want to move around the screen. Um, instead of having to recalculate the points of your path every single time, uh, you can keep the path constant, and you can instead translate the canvas so that uh, the path moves with the translation instead of having to uh, redo your path. Um, also, take advantage of saving and restoring. So, 
if you are issuing a bunch of transformations on your canvas, um, you want to be able to roll back to a certain state afterwards. Uh, you can call save before, then you can say translate it, scale it, rotate it, draw your chat bubble, then you can restore it back uh, before the translation so you don't have to undo each step one by one. Finally, be aware of pixel boundaries. I mentioned this before. Um, so you can, for precision, you can do all your calculations in floats. Um, but when you actually get to the drawing, make sure that you're casting or rounding back to an integer. Um, and for strokes, make sure that you insert or translate them accordingly. All right, that's it. Thank you.